Fabulous. So welcome everybody. We have a foam roller as our prop today for our spine safe mat class. So um, we're going to start by putting the roller crossways um, at the head of your mat. And so just so you know, as you're rolling, there should not be pain. If there's pain, that is a sign that it's not the right thing to be doing for your body. How we'll get onto the roller uh, in a spine safe way is to place your hands uh, on the mat, swing your legs around, and then your forearms can go on the mat. You can engage your abdominals and just very gently and carefully flat back, hinge back so that you're sitting on the, your, your spine at about your bra strap line um, or just below the chest line uh, if you're not a bra strap kind of person. Um, and then if you have long hair, you gather it up in your hands and everybody place hands behind the base of the skull and your, finger, your fingers are interlaced as a kind of a hammock for your skull. So the back of the neck is long. And then we'll go ahead and just lift up the hips. So you can lift the hips. You don't need to lift them real high and just roll up your spine. You can set your hips down and walk your feet forward as needed um, in order to you know, get all the way up to the tops of your shoulder blades. And then we'll come all the way back down to the bra strap line. Now you could go further down, but not into your low back. But just once you get past your bra strap line, um, the ribs are not as well supported. Um, and so we need to be very careful about rolling on what are called the false and floating ribs, okay? So that's why we're primarily going from bra strap line above. Another way you can measure this range of motion is you're going from the bottom of your shoulder blades to the top of your shoulder blades, okay? And not onto the neck. So we'll just do a couple more here. And that's good. And then we'll again, set our hips down on the mat uh, with the roller placed at about the bra strap uh, line and keeping the back of your neck long, allow yourself to stretch backward over the roller. Okay, so keeping the back of the neck long is important here. You know, we want to keep blood flow and nerves open and able to transmit information, you know, so we don't want to crane our neck. So and then we'll go ahead and from here. Feel where your ribs are in your body, you know, just inside your body, pull your ribs down towards your navel to bring your body up to what would be a neutral spine. So we'll breathe in and stretch over the roller and breathe out, pull into your navel and slide your rib cage down. So we have a little um, upper body, upper ab work here that we can add in. Okay, and you can actually do this at different segments. So if you roll uh, the roller up a little bit more, you'll find the range of motion probably decreases, but then it can feel really good on the upper spine to do this. Okay, and again, anywhere you go with the roller, if you inch upward or if you inch a little lower, the range of motion will increase a little bit. The back of the neck stays long, the head stays supported. So we'll just finish that up and then keep one hand behind your head, place the other arm down on the mat in front of the roller and roll to one side and then get up. So that was very nice, you guys. So we'll go ahead now and place the roller on the mat on the other end of the mat. So it's going to be laying across the roller I mean, excuse me, across the mat and underneath your knees. So we'll just swing our legs around and come on down, roll onto your side and then your back and the roller is just simply under your knees. Your knees are bent and your feet are flat on the mat. So we'll take our hands and stretch the back of the neck long. Now, if you're still back bent here in your neck, if, if for example, you feel like you're looking behind you, you may need a little bit of a pillow behind your head, that's fine. Pull your shoulder blades down, lift and lower your hips just to organize your spine and then place hands wide across your belly. Okay, so take a breath. 
As you exhale, pull your belly softly in, feel your belly drop down underneath your hands and then bring one leg up to tabletop. Okay, good. Now see if you can maintain that scoop and bring the other leg up to tabletop, right? So from here, we'll go into our toe touches on the other side of the roller. Your thighs move away from you and the bend of the knee doesn't really change. So alternating legs, or if you're feeling really buff today, you could do both legs at the same time, but you might need to make your range of motion a little smaller. And if that feels like too much, you would return both feet to the floor and do some marching instead. And everybody's touching belly. So we're setting up this nice biofeedback loop uh, between our finger pads and our belly and our brain. Okay, so we'll just do a few more of the variation that you've chosen to warm up with today. Just keep breathing. Maybe feel that your face is softening. Maybe your mouth is lifting at the corners. And we'll finish up our set here. Good, now bring both knees into your hands. So you hug your knees in. And then take your knees around in mirror image circles. So we're just moving our legs with our arms now. Take a breath in and out and keep your breath flowing. Let's go the other direction with your little knee stirs here, your knee circles. Good. And then hug your knees in for a moment. Take a breath. Great, and then bring your feet back down to the other side of the roller. So shoulders pull down the back and still have your hands on your belly for a moment. Exhale your left leg up to tabletop. Inhale, straighten your leg up toward the ceiling and then bring your left leg down until the back of your thigh just taps the roller and bring it back up again. Okay, so you just tap the roller and bring it back up again. Now, as you do this, see if you're able to bring your leg down to that level without your hips shifting, okay? So you're using abs for that. We'll just do one more, and then we'll turn it into a circle. Bring your leg down, bring it out to the side, and up. So it actually is more like a mirror image letter D, isn't it? So we'll do four in each direction, and three, Notice as your leg swings out to the side that you need to use more right low ab and four in changing directions. Keep breathing, keep pulling up into belly. Now think about adding in your pelvic floor. So we pull our innards upward, to give ourselves more support. So we have support in our muscles from the inside and the outside. And just keep breathing. One more this direction. Beautiful job. Bring your left knee into your hands. That's very nice. Now have your right hand right below the knee. Your left hand slides down to the outer left ankle. Take a breath here. And as you exhale, bring your right leg up at the tabletop and then extend it out at about a 45 degree angle in the room. Take a breath. And exhale, switch the leg you're holding. So you push, pull your shin inward a little bit and keep switching. So your hand placement changes every single time. Good. Now, if you have bone density loss or neck issues, your head needs to remain down. If that's not your case, next time you're holding on to your left leg, you could nod your chin and bring your head, neck, and shoulders up and continue on with our single leg stretch with your head up. But please remain with the head down if you've got bone density loss. Okay, one more on each side. And we'll bring both knees in and again, stir your knees around in mirror image circles and the other direction. Perfect. And then we'll float our feet back down to the mat. Shoulders are down, lift and lower your hips to organize your spine and bring the right leg up to tabletop. Extend it long, keep it as straight as you can. Lower it down, tap the roller with the back of your thigh and bring it back up again. Lower it down and tap and lift. 
Let's place hands on belly again. We are working with a different leg after all. So we need to make sure that this one is connected as well as the other one was. And four, good. And then we'll start on our capital letter D, right? Bring the leg down, bring it out to the side and around and up. So you notice now you're working your right leg. Your left low ab is the one that needs to provide the energy to keep from rolling your hips, your pelvis with the leg. And four, and let's go the other direction. You remember our pelvic floor, so we can provide ourselves with some internal support here. And three, keep breathing. And four, perfect job. And we'll bring the right leg in. And then go ahead and place your hands in your single leg stretch position. So you've got your right hand on the outside of the right ankle, left hand up on the shin below the knee, bring your left leg up to tabletop, extend it in a 45 degree angle and begin. So we're moving from side to side, ends breathing, head down. If you are working on building bone density, head up, if that's not your concern. And we just keep breathing and smiling and enjoying this push-pull effect that helps us deepen into our abs. Every time we touch our leg, we're active in our arms. And we'll finish that up. Knees in. Good. Take your knees around in mirror image circles. And again, mirror image circles. Perfect. Well, that was fun. Now let's go ahead and place our feet on the roller. And just keep your hips down. Roll the roller underneath your feet a few times. So you can place the roller wherever it needs to be for your hamstrings and your knee joint to be comfortable. All right, so it's just give yourself a little, little massage to the bottoms of the feet for a moment. Good. And then we'll go ahead and place your um, arches on the roller. And the closer the roller is, um, the easier the exercise is. So we'll have the back of the neck long, engage your abs, pull up your pelvic floor, and then let your gluteals lift you. So your buttock muscles are lifting you. And if you've got your bone density lost, then only lift to where your low back is off, but your ribs are still on. If you don't have that going on, you can lift a little higher, okay? So let's just go ahead and lower back down, lengthen your spine, and we'll do about five more, just lifting. See if you can get your buttock muscles to engage before anybody else. That's how your hamstrings remain happy, okay? And three, and four, and five, and just breathe and soften your face and lift the corners of the mouth. And last one, perfect. Now, we'll go ahead and lift up and stay up, okay? Roll the roller back and forth under the soles of your feet. And okay? two and three, and you begin to feel your hamstrings, all right? More behind the knee joint, and that's good for them. Okay, and we'll just do a couple more. Hamstrings, the thing we need to exercise that we really don't enjoy that much, right? And we'll come on and lower down and now take your left leg behind the thigh in both hands. So pull your leg in to where you feel a hamstring stretch and then we'll do an active hamstring stretch. So you're gonna pull in a little bit more, bending your knee, flexing your foot, and then see if you can press the sole of your foot toward the ceiling. So it's bend and press. Press. When you press your foot toward the ceiling, you're pressing into your interlaced hands. So that activates the thigh muscle, your quadricep muscle, and then the hamstring will reciprocally lengthen. So we are working with the body's natural reflexes here to be able to lengthen our hamstrings. 
Someday it will happen, I promise you. And let's go ahead and do the other side. So right leg, and we reach up toward the ceiling, pull your knee in, flex your foot, and then press your foot toward the ceiling. Really work the feeling of the thigh muscle, straightening your knee. And a couple more here. Perfect, all right. So we'll just have, you can have your feet on the roller or your feet on the floor on the other side of the roller. It's up to you. We're just gonna be resting our legs down for a moment. Let's take our hands and interlace our fingers behind the base of the skull. So wing your elbows off the mat a little ways. So you can just maybe see your elbows in your peripheral vision and then pull up your pelvic floor and then nod your chin a little bit as you begin to look down towards your thighs come up by pressing your ribs down into the mat. So this is uh, activating our abdominals, okay? And then come back down again. Now, if you have bone density loss, it is very, very low, like it's a head hover. So when you come up into your abdominal activation, you can uh, you know, stretch your fingers down and still touch the mat with your fingers. You're barely lifted off the mat. Your shoulders are still down and you're just pressing into the mat a little bit more and then lowering down. If you do not have bone density loss or disc issues like disc derangement, you can come up a little higher and then your gaze is down over your cheekbones towards your belly and then we come back down again. So we choose a position that's healthy for our spines to exercise our abdominals when we go into our upper body lift or head hover, okay? I actually kind of like going into a smaller range of motion, maybe the initiation of the upper body lift, and you focus on that. And it feels like focusing on a smaller range of motion sometimes will really help us to get into what's happening inside our bodies, you know, with a little bit more focus. Okay, so a couple more here. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and lay down and interlace our fingers, and then take your left leg and stretch it up toward the ceiling and place your hands behind your leg. Your arms are nice and rounded. And this time we're not going to interlace our fingers, okay? Exhale, bring the right leg up in the tabletop and extend it to a 45 degree angle. Now push your left leg into your hands as you're pulling with your hands to give a little active stretch and then switch the leg you're holding. Okay, so we're going back and forth. So here we have our single long leg stretch. Now naturally, if bone density loss is not your concern, you could come up and be looking at your thighs as you do this exercise. If you are um, you know, building bone density, uh, then you need to keep your head down and go back and forth. And your legs might need to be a little higher in the room with the head down, okay? So head up allows you to lower your legs a little bit more because it's a, you know, a little easier position to work from for the abs, okay? So one more on each side, and then we'll bring our knees into our chest. And this time, take your knees around in one circle. So massage the edges of the sacrum. So you guide with your hands. Let's go the other direction. And one more. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and place your feet down on the other side of the roller again. Arms are down beside you. Back of the neck is long. Take a breath. And as you exhale, pull up your pelvic floor, engage your gluteals, and lift your hips. So your hips are lifted to an appropriate height. Again, hip uh, bottom lift if we are protecting our bones. 
and a higher lift if that's not our concern, okay? So then everybody place your fingertips on your hip bones and lift up your elbows off the mat and then move from side to side. So you're just moving laterally without allowing the hip to dip, okay? So just side to side and you can feel like if your fingers are really in the right place here, which is kind of right inside the hip bones and fairly low, you can actually literally feel your hip joint underneath your fingers, it's fascinating. So we go from side to side and it's not really walking because we're not rotating, but you can feel one glute engages. And then let's pause with our weight centered on the left leg and see if it's possible to quickly lift and lower the right leg without the hip dipping. It's hard, huh? And then go over to the right, quickly lift and lower the left leg without the hip dipping. So I'll do that a couple more times on each side. Good, one more time on each side. And then come back to center and roll on down lengthening your spine. Beautiful job. Okay, so now let's roll over to one side, press up and you've got the roller underneath your thighs. Okay, our hands can come back behind us. Lift your chest, pull into your belly and then take yourself for a ride on the roller, rolling out your hamstrings, okay? If this doesn't work for you for any reason, such as the shoulders or the wrists are not comfortable with it, you could just sit, support yourself with your arms behind you and just rotate your thighs and then move the roller to different places, like lower and higher and such, okay? So two ways to get some hamstring release out of this. Good. And then we'll go ahead and sit up for a moment. Let's just set the roller aside. Okay. And we are going to lay down on our side for a little side series minus the roller. So let's just have our head supported on our hands. Line your crown of your head to your tailbone up with the back of the mat now. So we're lifting our side waist and both shoulder blades are down. And if this bottom arm, if that's not comfortable, you could use a pillow under your head or even maybe the roller, the roller might be too big. Now let's stretch our top hip down using your hand and just see how that feels for a moment, just to stretch the top hip. Take a breath, good, let it go and see if you can keep your hips lined up vertically, shoulders down the back. So fingertips in front, lift your top leg, Good, <laughs> and then bring it forward and extend it, bring it back and see if you can extend long through your hip joint without extending your back or misplacing your back. Now bring your heel towards your bum, increasing the stretch in the quad, bring the bent leg forward, extend, reach back, bend. Bent leg forward, extend, and reach back and bend. One more bicycle in this direction. Good, now from the bent leg position, extend along, bring the leg forward, bend, bent leg comes back, extend long. Straight leg forward, bend. So remember we are looking for a stretch at each end point of this movement. And the stretch that's happening is in our, in our leg and our hip. And one more. Good, and then go ahead and bend the top leg and rest it on the bottom leg. That was good work. So from here, let's place our hand on our hip to make sure that it's not shifting and just lift and lower the top leg. So we go into our side leg lift. And so once you're certain that you're not flexing in your waist, right, it's just your hip moving, um, just your leg lifting and make sure that your knee and ankle are lifting at the same rate of speed, especially those of us that have had any hip replacements on this side, 
sometimes these muscles, um, you know, need to be, well, they always need to be strengthened post-surgery, but um, if the ankle lifts faster than the knee, that's internal rotation, and that would be um, contraindicated for many types of hip replacements. So we just want to make sure that we're doing this lift and everything is lifting evenly. Well, that was a lot. So now go ahead and keep your uh, ankles together, your feet together, only rotate the knee up. Check behind you with your forearm and make sure as you do this that you are not rolling back with the movement. So we just want what uh, movement is truly possible in the hip joint without rolling into a rotation in our torso. And keep breathing, keep pulling into your abdominals. Once you're certain you're not rolling back, you can put your hand anywhere you want, even up toward the ceiling. Smile. That's it, different muscles. We have nine gluteal muscles. We need to exercise them all. They all provide different important functions. Good. Now let's go ahead and rest that, bring your arm down. So let's rotate our leg up and then put the foot behind your front leg. Okay, now straighten your front leg. See if you can stack your hips in this position and then place your hand in front of you and lift and lower the bottom leg, okay? So this is my take on how do we do a bottom leg lift without doing a potentially um, contraindicated movement for a uh, posterior hip replacement. And it's also just kind of fun to try out a new position. Like it's harder to maintain our hip stacking position with the leg behind. And then if you're okay, if you feel safe putting your leg in front, do a few with the leg in front and see how that feels different. I don't know how it feels for you, but in my body, I feel like I almost have less range of movement in the, in the leg, right? But I have to be more careful with the leg behind not to roll back. So it's a fun little experiment we can explore in our body. Okay, and that's probably enough of that. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and from here, roll onto your belly. If you have any um, issue with uh, back bending, such as a spondylolisthesis, um, you can put a, a pillow underneath your abdomen to keep your spine in a you know, bias toward flexion, or you could be on your knees and approximating the next exercise. Take your roller, place it at the top of the mat, and then lengthen the back of your neck. So from here, we'll place our um, forearms on the roller with thumbs up, and see if you can move your shoulder blades up towards your ears and then down away from your ears without really lifting up into an extension for a moment. So we're just trying to focus on shoulder blades moving up and down. And your arms can be quite wide on the roller. And if this does not work for you for any reason, such as it doesn't feel good in your shoulders, you could be sliding your hands along the floor, along your mat, okay? And just working at a little bit lower angle. Okay, one more. Good. So now we have to walk the roller closer to our elbows to go any further because we need room. Okay, so pull your shoulder blades down and then pull up into belly, imprint your pubic bone on the mat, and begin to bend your elbows and come up to where you feel is appropriate for your body in an extension. Okay, there should be no pain. We come back down, we let the shoulders elevate. We pull them down again, and then we come up into our little mini swan, then come back down again, okay? 
So if this feels good, rock on. We'll keep going and moving into our extension. Remember that pubic bone stays imprinted, belly pulls in a lot. So what we're looking for in our body is a nice smooth movement. If we feel like we're compressing into any part of our low back, then we make it smaller or we go back to the previous exercise. So we'll do a couple more. Nicely done. And then let's go ahead and let the roller go away. Place your hands stacked on the, on the mat underneath your forehead and lower your forehead down. And from here, we'll bend our right knee and feel our thigh lengthening and then just kick, kick toward the right buttock. Then place your foot back down as you lengthen your leg. Bend the left knee and kick, kick towards your buttock and then lengthen down. So as we continue, we can up tempo this a little bit as long as we're able to maintain our pelvis nice and steady on the mat. So of course we're using abs here, just like everywhere else, okay? And we'll do one more on each side. And then we can decide whether we wish to stay down or come up onto forearms. So if you choose forearms, bring your forearms up and then tuck your toes and kind of push yourself forward a little bit. So you almost are using your mat as a traction device to lengthen your heart forward. And we'll do a few more. Kick, kick, and down. Kick, kick, and down. Cubic bone staying imprinted, belly pulled up. So you're almost in this sort of plank idea right now and everything is staying stable. And then for a little fun foot choreography, you could point flex and extend, point flex, extend. Ah, just keep adding on. So we're using our hamstrings, obviously. We're working on our lumbar and our pelvic stabilization and our core strength. And we're stretching our quadricep muscles so there's a lot going on. Shoulder blades pulling down, breathing. All right, and that's enough of that. So let's go ahead and pull up into belly. Tuck your toes a little bit and then push back with a flat back. And then we can walk our knees forward, walk our arms back, take your knees wide and press into a wide-legged child's pose. And then in the child's pose, we can make two fists stack them on top of each other, and that's where we can put our forehead. So we can maintain a, as neutral of a spine as possible. Take a few breaths here. One more breath. And then we'll come up and let's come into hands and knees for a moment. Okay, so in hands and knees, shoulder blades pull down the back. We have wrists and elbows below shoulder. If your wrists are not happy with this position, you can try two things, fists instead of flat hands or forearms down, okay, they're both fine. Pull your shoulder blades down, pull your belly up and in, and then extend your right leg long with the toe pad still on the mat. And let's just go ahead and press back into a calf stretch here, and then come forward and press back into a calf stretch here and forward. So we'll do that two more times. Press back and forward, back, and forward, good. Now keep your right leg behind you with the toe pads on, pull up into belly a little more and set your shoulder blades down again. Then see if it's okay to bring your left arm off the mat and then extend it forward with your thumb up. So forward can, is relative. You can be in a I position or a Y position, or if you're healing a shoulder right now, a T position can also work for this. 
So everything is working. You've got your left glute supporting, your abdominals are in, you're breathing, your shoulder blades are down your back. Okay, good. Now, if you wish to add on, lift the right leg. Okay, good. And maintain your balance. And if you wish to add on, lift the left toes and shin off the mat. That's nice. And keep breathing. Keep your abdominal connection. Good. And then we'll bring all limbs back down to the mat. Bring your right knee down. Exhale, pull up into belly to arch your back gently toward the ceiling. Inhale and drop your belly down toward the mat. The crown of the head and the tailbone mirror each other as they lift slightly. Exhale and inhale. Good. Couple more. Exhale and inhale. Exhale. Inhale. That's right. And then we'll take the left leg behind, toe pads on. Good. And we'll press back into a calf stretch and forward. Back and forward. Back and forward. One more. Back and forward. And keeping the left toe pads down, draw your shoulders down your back again. And then go ahead and see if it's okay to lift the left, the, I mean, excuse me, the right arm. Okay, that would have been hard. The right arm overhead in an I, a Y, or a T position. So any of these is fine. Your shoulder needs to be happy. Okay. And then we'll hold here. The hips are level, your abs are working. You feel your right glute working. And then if you want more, lift the left leg. Okay, and if you want more than that, lift the right shin okay, and foot, right? So we've got different ways that we can challenge our balance and our stabilizers are working. So all the wiggling that you feel in these exercises, that's actually good. And that's actually small muscles that are working and getting stronger to help support us. We need our stabilizer muscles in life. And then bring all your limbs down. Bring your right knee, your left knee down, excuse me, and take your knees apart. And let's go back into another wide-legged child's pose. Stack your fists, put your forehead down. Take three breaths here. Then we'll come up, we'll set the roller aside again, and let's turn over onto our other side. So we'll line ourselves up with the back of the mat. Make sure that your bottom shoulder is happy. You can use a pillow here. Crown of the head through the tailbone is lined up with the mat and your legs are bent, okay? So we'll place our finger pads in front you know, for some support. Let's stretch the hip for a moment. Let's press on the hip and see if you can stretch that top hip a little bit. And take a breath here. Then let's just go ahead and leave the top hip long, top waist long, fingertips down. Bring your leg up, up the other leg. Bring your knee forward, extend your leg forward. Keep the leg straight as you bring it back. Do your best not to flex in your back as you do this, and then bend your knee back to increase the quad stretch. Bring your leg forward, straighten it for a hamstring stretch, bring it back, you're finding length, bend, find the quad stretch. Okay, and this is three of four for our bicycles. And bend, bend leg forward, extend, Long leg back, bend, good. Now we reverse the motion. Bent leg moves back, we lengthen, find how where our connections are in our body. Long leg forward, hamstring, bend, and back, extend. See my legs getting longer as we do this. I know yours is too. So where I wasn't kicking the screen, you know, in the first couple of reps, now I am. 
it's a miracle, miracle of Pilates again. And we rest our legs down, good. So now we have our hands on our hip. We're lifting our top leg up and down. And so just like on the other side, we need to be careful that our um, ankle and, and foot are lifting at the same rate of speed as our knee. So the whole leg is lifting off the bottom leg. Okay, yeah. So if we have had a hip replacement on this side, we wanna make sure that, especially sure that we're not, you know, kind of doing this little uh, internal rotation. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do two more here. Make sure that we're not rolling back. Okay, and then rest the leg down. Now slide your forearm behind your back and just feel how far can you lift your knee, keeping your feet together without rolling back. Okay, so there's a certain point where that, that roll back happens. And we're going to just go with our true external rotation in our hip. Get the other six glutes. They call them the deep six. It's amazing. Our bodies are amazing feats of engineering. So we just keep rotating the knee up and down with the feet together and breathing. Perfect. So we'll let that go. Now we have our fun, our fun adductor work to do. So if we take our top leg, bend it and place the foot behind the bottom leg and then straighten out the bottom leg. And with this, this position, it's more challenging not to roll back. Then we can lift and lower the bottom leg and try to keep our hips stacked. If you are okay, if you feel safe bringing your foot forward and that's not a issue with a hip replacement for you, then you can go ahead and work with the foot in front. If you enjoy the challenge of working with the foot behind, it just takes more work, I think, to keep the hips stacked. So we'll do several many of these like we did on the other side. I think we might have done as many as 20 on the other side. We'll just wait until it burns. Oh, we know we've got some good uh, work and some lactic acid building up in our inner thighs. You know, the inner thighs are incredibly important. They work in a paired relationship with our gluteals in movements like, you know, walking, which is one of, you know, the important things that we do. It's probably one of the most important things we do. And let's go ahead and let that go. That was very good, everybody. And then we'll press up to sitting. Nice, let's roll our shoulders back and down and take just a moment to take a couple of big breaths. As a matter of fact, if you put your hands on your rib cage, okay, see how wide you can breathe. And then exhale, see how narrow you can exhale. Inhale, and then exhale, okay? Sometimes it works better not to have the thumbs, you know, behind, right? So you maybe have palms, inhale, and exhale. Real nice. So now let's take our um, roller and we're gonna stand up with it. So we'll be using the roller as a way to organize our upper body in this next uh, short segment. So let's roll our shoulders back and down, lift the corners of the mouth, pull your belly in and up, and then step back with your right leg. Okay, good. See if you could do that landing on your toes. Good, and then step forward, and then step back with the left leg. See if you can land on your toes and keep your body still and step forward. Now, as you step back, See if it's okay to lift the roller, take a breath. Exhale, lower the roller as you step forward. Take a breath. Exhale, step back, lift the roller. Exhale, step forward. So from side view, as we continue moving with our breath, 
we're really trying to stay connected in our abs from pubic bone to navel to sternum. And this action of stepping back and raising the roller does not disturb our spine or our pelvis position. So our low back stays the same. And we can feel that we need to adjust our shoulder blades down our back as we lift the roller. And one more. Very nice. Okay, so next we'll step back with one set of toes. Find our balance here. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. And step forward, lower the roller. Take a breath. Exhale, step back with the other leg. The roller is about chest height. We inhale, rotate. See if you can keep the center of the roller at about the center of your chest in alignment. And inhale, rotate. Exhale and step forward. Let's do one more on each side. Step back, inhale, rotate. Exhale, inhale, rotate. Exhale and step forward. And last one, step back, landing on your toes. Everything's zipped up. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, inhale, rotate. Exhale and step forward. Great. Now we'll step back with one set of toes again and hold that position. Zip up from pubic bone to navel to sternum. Draw your shoulders down your back. Bring the roller up to a height that feels comfortable for your shoulders where your shoulder blades are slid down your back. And then we'll inhale and side bend. Exhale to center. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. Let's do one more on each side. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. We'll bring the roller down. Step forward. Take a breath. Step back with the other leg. Landing on your toes, heel lifted if possible. Organize your body, pubic bone, navel, sternum. Bring the roller up. Shoulder blades drop down the back. And we inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, abdominals. Inhale, side bend. And exhale, bring the roller down, step forward. And then we'll take the roller vertical and place it on the floor with your hand on top of the roller. Okay, shift your weight over to your opposite leg. So if my right hand is on the roller, it's on my right side, I've shifted to my left side. Tighten up your hip and glute musculature and bring your left leg up. Now externally rotate the left leg and then straighten your legs straight forward so your toes are pointed outward but your leg is straight in front of you and you will feel a different area of your thigh working. So we're working on our vastus medialis and vastus medialis obliquus and we'll do about 10 repetitions here. And it's important that we straighten the leg completely and that our heel is closer to our midline and the toes are angled slightly outward, okay? Right, like that. So, and six, seven, just keep breathing. Shoulders are down, abs are in. Eight, nine, 10. Nice job. Kick the leg behind you and just stretch it out for a moment. So, this time you could rotate your heel in and set it down on the floor. Just keep your hip bones forward and just pause for a moment. It's sort of a quasi warrior one stretch for this leg position. It's our Pilates lunge position in external rotation. And then go ahead and step forward. So now we're gonna change the roller. It's under the left hand in, in my world. I'll shift over to my right leg and tighten everything up. Lift the left leg so the leg is in the middle of the support leg and the roller. Externally rotate. Extend straight forward so your toes are out, your heel is in, and bend. Extend straight forward and bend. Three, 
four. So again, we're just doing our best to keep our bodies tall. Okay. And we can feel that it's this inner quadricep. So this is important because this is a quadricep muscle that tends to become weakened for lots of reasons. Last one, and then go back into your Pilates lunge or your warrior one leg position. And we'll just get this uh, stretched out. So the, we affectionately call it the VMO. It becomes weak for many reasons. So that's why we're exercising it, uh, paying special attention to it. It helps to track your kneecap as you straighten your leg. And it's also responsible for helping you just straighten your leg the last 10 degrees. Pretty darn important. Let's go ahead and step forward and we'll come back to the mat. So now we'll be setting the roller down lengthwise on your mat. And we'll be doing a little bit of core work laying down on the roller. Uh, in, a, in a way that's safe. And so hopefully you can sit on the roller using your arms and abs to support you and maintaining a fairly flat back. And we need to sit toward the end of the roller, being careful of your tailbone. And then if I walk my legs away from me a little bit and use my arms to help me, I can basically plank down to the roller without rolling my body or my spine. Once we're here, we organize our spine um, as best we can on the length of the roller. Good. And then our legs can stay nice and wide. And we'll start out with just a nice chest stretch here. So just open your arms out to the side. And you can think about doing this in the shape of an inverted V. Your arms don't have to be super way up overhead. Okay, so you can start low and then see where you can go, um, keeping the backs of your hands on your rug or your floor and kind of make some little snow angels and just see where you might feel like you need to stretch here. So just breathe and open the chest. And one more. Okay. And then we'll bend our elbows, place them on the mat beside us. So the elbows are in contact with the mat. Take a breath and as you exhale, zip up, pull up your pelvic floor and bring your right leg up to tabletop. Good. Now see if it's okay to lift your elbows. And if you feel like you're still kind of bonking back and forth, keep the elbows close to the mat. Take your left arm up. The right elbow can be hovering or down. If you feel like you've got your balance, you can bring your right elbow your right arm up also. And then we'll just do an opposite arm and leg reach here on the roller. So we're balancing. We'll do about 10. See if you can find the diagonal between your right low abdominal, right inside your hip bone, that area, and the left rib cage. Okay, so it's there's a diagonal connection between those two points. And we're challenging that connection and challenging the core as we continue to breathe and move here. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. Beautiful job. We'll go ahead and lower all limbs down. Just give yourself another moment. Do some snow angels with your arms and stretch your chest out. Okay. If you feel like your right leg that was bending and extending got a little work, you can also stretch out that leg, making sure that you're pulling into your abs so that your back is not popping up off the roller excessively. Okay. And then we'll get ready to start again, bending both elbows. Your elbows are down beside you on the floor. Exhale, take your left leg up the tabletop. Okay, see if it's okay to hover your elbows. It's a new side, so it might not be as balanced or it might be easy, who knows? So we'll go ahead and make a decision about where the elbow is gonna be. I'm gonna keep my elbow down as I bring my right arm up. You can lift your elbow or you can lift both arms. 
and we'll extend right arm and left leg and bring it on back. And again, here, as we do our 10 uh, repetitions of this movement, we're breathing, we're finding the diagonal from the right rib cage to the left low abdominal area. And five, just keep breathing and see if you can find that diagonal connection and really capitalize on it. Make this connection stronger in our bodies. And nine. And 10. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and bring all limbs down. And again, just like on the other side, you can slide your leg out, staying in your abs, stretch out your chest. Nice work. And then we'll bend both knees carefully. Just come off to the side. Okay, so you can um, sit up. And we'll set the roller aside. We'll swing our legs to one side and pull your shoulders down. Lift your arm up for length and then exhale over and we'll get a beautiful side stretch here. We'll breathe. Take another breath. And then exhale, press the floor away. Grab your other shin, find a counter stretch. Come to balance for a moment if you can and gracefully float down and over and if you'd like to go into rotation you can inhale and open your heart exhale pull your belly in and move into your um, mermaid stretch so if you have any concerns about your hip or your knee you can go on your back here okay and the bottom leg crosses over the top and then you just bring yourself into a figure four stretch on your back like so. Okay, so. We'll take a few breaths here. Kind of scan the body. See where you feel that you need to release any um, holding pattern, All right? Just as you breathe, you can feel that your breath moves your body. It's very subtle. And so we can kind of send our breath in a figurative way into areas that are feeling tight. We can ask our body to lengthen. And we'll take one more breath here. And we'll inhale to unwind, exhale to come up. If you're on your back, just switch sides. Okay. We'll swing our legs around, shoulders down the back, breathe in, reach for length. And exhale over. Take a breath, lovely side stretch. Take another breath. And then exhale, press the floor away. Take a hold of your other shin. For the counter stretch. Keep breathing. Come into balance. Gracefully float down. Find your side stretch again. We'll inhale, open our heart. Exhale, pull into belly and find our mermaid. Stretch and keep breathing. Now maybe soften the eyes. Soften your face, separate your teeth, lift the corners of the mouth, check where your shoulders are, let them drift away from your earlobes, check how your back is feeling, let your breath find more room, in your spine. There's literally, there is a connection between your breathing muscle, your diaphragm and your spine. 
So you literally can lengthen your spine by breathing. That's a whole lecture unto itself. And if you really focus on your breathing, you can almost feel that your spine gets to lengthen. And that's a good thing. We'll take one more breath here. We'll inhale and unwind. Exhale, come on up. And let's pull our shoulders down and our abs in till I see you again. And thanks for coming. You did a great job.